Use the right tool for the job. And that's the intro. Now to the video. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be comparing two microphones. The AT-875R by Audio-Technica and the MK-012 by Octava. The Octava being a small diaphragm condenser microphone and the AT-875R by Audio-Technica is a short shotgun microphone. Now, as I said in the intro, using the right tool for the right job or using the right tool for the job, which is a term that I get confused sometimes. I mean, I guess it works either way, but regardless, with a shotgun microphone and a small diaphragm, they technically can be used for the same thing. Now, one works better than the other in different scenarios. So for example, a shotgun microphone would probably work better outside rather than a small diaphragm. There are exceptions, always exceptions to the rule, but that's usually the case. In an interior reflective area, the small diaphragm would be more applicable to the use case. Now, that's the point of these tests. Throw it into a bunch of environments and see which one works better in those environments. Obviously, a quality test in the booth is usually where you would see the difference in quality. Now, of course, the studio here is not like crazy reflective, so there's a good example of what the quality is of the microphone naturally and with not many uh, altering things around it. So now let's get into the build. These two microphones are really well built, really well made. I really love the way these things are constructed. They're sturdy. They're really nice. I will say that the Octava seems a little bit more fragile. It's not flimsy, but it's a little more fragile. And I say that because small diaphragm condenser microphones tend to be a little bit more fragile. Not in all cases, but in this case, it certainly is. The Audio-Technica is definitely more robust, but not by much. I'm going to give it a little bit more credit in that department. With the Octava, you have three polar patterns. In this case, hypercardioid is on it right now. There is also an Omni and a cardioid. There's also other ones, but I don't have those ones. So I have Omni, cardioid, and hypercardioid for my options. And in this studio test, I'll be doing tests with the hypercardioid because the line gradient here is very similar to a hypercardioid polar pattern. So I'll try to keep things a little bit consistent and a little bit fair. Of course, know that you have options with the Octava. The line gradient is the only one for the Audio Technica. Now, that is going to be probably the major thing that you're going to be listening to is the off axis rejection, which we'll get into in a little bit. So coming out of the build, I'm going to keep it as a wash because I might lean a little bit to the Audio Technica, but I really like the build of the Octava. So let's keep it as a wash and pretty neutral there. Okay, so that was the noise test, mini fridge, fans on the computer, the only things going on. There is a dehumidifier in the other room, possibly a thing that could come into play. But the computer is kind of in that sweet spot. It's like in 90-ish degrees, maybe a little bit more to the microphones. And remember, hyper and, su hyper and line gradient, I almost slipped there with super, but it is a line gradient, very similar to a super or hyper, like I said. A little bit of a bulb on the back there, so a slight pickup on that 180 degree, but you have sweet spots in that 120 to 135 degrees that will be rejecting a little bit more. So let's get into off axis and distance. So I've been about like eight to 10 inches away from the microphones right now, roughly. Uh, the uh, the not the Octava, the Audio Technica is a little bit further down the shaft to the diaphragm. 
So keep that in mind. So it's probably like an extra, I don't know, four inches, five inches or so. Now backing up about like f uh, two feet away, maybe three feet. And this is what it's gonna sound like in the studio here. Mildly treated, not too crazy, but it's better than most areas. It is a small room, about eight by 12 in uh, like a rectangular shape and just a lot of stuff in here. So you're probably not gonna get a lot of reflection uh, back and forth to the microphones. Now, 90 degree test, about a foot away from the Audio Technica. This is what it's gonna sound like in the studio. And yeah, so stage left. Yeah, stage left. I gotta remember that I'm getting back on uh, a job to do that. What I did last year, what I mentioned last year, if you've been here around, if you've been around this channel for a while. So now, moving over to the Sweet spots, 120 to 130 degrees, about a foot away from the Audio Technica. And this is what it's gonna sound like in the studio here. And you're probably gonna get the most rejection from this specific angle. And you try to maneuver your microphone to fit that if there's any noise or anything around you. All right, so this is a bit of a strange setup. I just had to flip them around. This is the 180 degree test of the microphones, line gradient on the Audio Technica and hypercardioid on the Octava. This is what it's gonna sound like in the studio. And remember, they have a little bit of a bulb of pickup. So let me, let me know down in the comments what you think is more rejecting of that 180 degree, about two feet away from the backs of the microphones. Not necessarily the diaphragm, but the rears of the microphones. All right, so. Let's go into the booth and see how these things perform in a more confined and treated area. No reflections, a lot of soft surfaces. Uh, the booth is a little bit bigger than it was at one point or another, depending on how long you've been around this channel. So keep that in mind. It's about like four, maybe even five by five now. It's basically like three quarters of this room uh, with the walls. So you could probably see them a little bit on the ceiling there. I have it rolled up, so you just bring it down. So let's go to the booth. All right, so we're in the booth right now with these microphones and uh, I'm listening to the Audio Technica right now. And it's, it's a good microphone for this style. I really like the way that it sounds. I have the windscreen on right now, which we're gonna do it without it eventually. But uh, I really like how this sounds as a nice low end. And I feel like comparing this one with this, in this situation, the low ends are definitely comparable. So keep that in mind when you're listening to it. Let's switch over to the Octava now. So now listening to the Octava, it's a different low end. It's a little bit higher. It's uh, pushed more closer to that 500 range and like the low mid section and more into the mids uh, where they got that low presence. It's not as rumbly as the Audio Technica, but I definitely notice a low end presence with the Octava and I have the hypercardioid polar pattern on here. Just so you know, I'll be switching to the hyper, not the, uh, the cardioid, the regular one in just a sec. So line gradient hypercardioid right now as we're testing it. All right. So for the plosive test, I'm just going to do it with these. I'm not going to switch the capsule for that because it's the same quality of plosive rejection so keep that in mind uh going with the octava right now since i have it on uh both apparatuses the pop screen and the windscreen just the windscreen Ooh, I like it nope don't even don't even bother it's not even worth trying to do it so just be very careful with the octava it's very sensitive with the audio technica both of them Windscreen, nothing, better, and this. I don't remember if I did that with the other one, but we're going to do nude now. And this is what it's going to sound like. And you notice that the Audio Technica right now is opened up. It's got more of that high end. And I don't know, I, I, I was kind of, when I did the solo video, I kind of liked it without it, but... Now I'm kind of like, eh, it's okay. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, I get hot and cold on these microphones sometimes. You hear it differently at different points. And uh, I don't know. I'm not 
as impressed or as in love, I guess, uh, with the nude version, for lack of better terms. I kind of like it with the windscreen on it. Now on the Octava, now that was not English. Now on the Octava, uh, yeah, it's it, with this situation. I think they're closer in tone and uh, not as uh, too far away. Uh, the low end is not as present there, but the low end isn't as present here as well with the Audio Technica without the windscreen. All right, so we got our mic set up in an ADR type situation. Now, uh, I say ADR because this is one of those where you try to simulate the situation that you were in while you were recording, so it's kind of semi-accurate. You can't, of course, get the exact like, reverb and, like, ambient noise of the room but you try to simulate it as best you can uh, by taking the room and just getting some background noise or if you're able to I mean I, I think sometimes doing the audio over in the room that you were intending on getting the audio from would be a good option if you could but keep that in mind and of course I'm listening to this live so I'm kind of like eh on it I'm listening to the audio technica right now and I'm kind of on the fence about it. I did do the solo video, which I was messing around with it. So I go a little closer. I like it like this. Now, going to the Octava as a boom situation, I kind of like this a little bit more. And I'm interested to see how this is, comparatively speaking, in other situations. It's going to be interesting because obviously a shotgun and a small diaphragm are used in different situations, meaning the small diaphragm is usually used in situations where you have a lot of reverberation in the room, a lot of parallel walls, flat parallel walls. And I got the cardioid polar pattern on right now compared to the line gradient so i'm going to switch that out in just a sec just so you have an example but this is what it's going to sound like with that comparison so let's do the hypercardioid on the octava now all right so now the octava has the hypercardioid polar pattern on but i'm listening to the uh at 875r yep I'm remembering that one <laughs> and this was going to sound like comparatively speaking now I'm going to switch to the audio, not the, the other one, the Octava. So the Octava now. And this is what it's going to sound like with the hypercardioid polar pattern. I really don't notice it in quality much. Like the tone is pretty similar. But I definitely notice like a little bit more rejection of noise. But there is a little bit of a fan noise going on. So... That's probably the uh, dehumidifier in the other room. So there's only so much this booth can do. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a perfect situation, but it's the best I got. And uh, so let me know what you think. And we're going to go to the untreated room right now. Okay, so we're in the untreated room right now, my bedroom. And this is what it's going to sound like in a reflective area. And this is where that you're going to notice the difference between a shotgun and a small diaphragm condenser microphone. Now, the Audio Technica is definitely a shorter shotgun microphone, a short, if you will, and it won't have as much of that rejection or like phase delay, uh, but it might. I'm not really sure. I've done some tests. I did the solo video, the comparison between that and the MKH 416. And I noticed a little bit of phase delay, but not like crazy amounts. But compared to the small diaphragm of the Octava, it probably is going to be noticeable more so than the previous tests. So this is your audio test with it about, about a foot, maybe foot and a half away from my mouth, boomed overhead. And now we're going to do off axis and distance, but first distance. All right, so... I'm about like six feet away or so. And this is what it's gonna sound like in the untreated room, reflective walls, reflective ceiling, because there's a flat ceiling. And 
there's a lot of stuff in the room, I will say, but not a lot of soft stuff. The only soft thing is the bed, which could play a role in it, but I would say that the wood floor and the flat walls in certain areas are going to be noticeable in this room. Now 90 degrees on the Audio-Technica side right here. And this is what it's going to sound like in the untreated room. I'm about like two, three feet away from the Audio-Technica and just a little bit more away from the Octava. The Octava has the Hypercardioid and the Audio-Technica has the Line Gradient. So keep that in mind when you're listening to this. Now on the Octava side, we're in the sweet spot, 120 to 135 degrees. This was going to sound like in the untreated room. Uh, you, I, I hear it right now. Uh, I don't know if the microphone's picking this up, but you got like a, like a weird, like echoey kind of corner, like uh, what's well, something that a bass trap would pick up. So if you know what a bass trap is, basically like a piece of soft material or foam that's in the corner to absorb that rumble of the corners of a room. So keep that in mind and let me know if you hear something like that. Okay, so I'm being lazy right now and I turn the microphones around. This is 180 degrees, about two, three feet away from the backs of the microphones. Hypercardioid and line gradient both have bulbs in the back, basically a slight pickup on the back there. Uh, what I noticed in the other test is the reflection off that wall right behind me, it picks up a lot. So keep that in mind. From what I can see, the levels are not as high as obviously if it was placed the other way, but you're hearing a lot of echo back. So keep that in mind and let me know what you think down in the comments. All right, so we have the Audio-Technica AT-875R and the Octava MK012 outside. This is just a test to show you using the right tool for the job. Now, the Octava has a hypercardioid, so it could be a good choice depending on what you have. If you just have the Octava, then probably just stick with that. If you're looking to have multiple, which you probably should if you're planning on being serious about this, uh, being audio recording and boom operator and things like that, uh, it all depends on your situation. Everybody's different. So the tool for the right, the right tool for the right job or right tool for the job. That's the word. That's the saying. So you have a line gradient and a hypercardioid polar pattern here. Now with the line gradient, it has acoustic slots on the side to reject noise and both of them have a little bulb on the back which we're going to find out how rough that is uh, when we do the off-axis test so now we are going to take off the windscreens because the windscreens are on right now I have the Movo windscreen on the Octava right now and the provided one for the uh, Audio Technica. So this has been the test with the windscreens on and we're gonna open it up and see how it Picks up those higher ends and crickets probably are gonna be the big thing that probably pops up. All right, so this is the Nude microphone test. No windscreen. No nothing. Uh, you got more openness probably more airy kind of tone It's not muffling any of those high-end tones or anything like that. So let me know what you think about the difference between the two, if you like one more than the other, if one has better rejection than the other. We got the street over there, we got some planes around, air conditioning units, not as much as it was when I was recording a little bit earlier, but uh, we got some kids running around screaming and things like that, all good stuff. And uh, yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put back on the windscreens because I definitely feel like regardless of the situation you probably should have these windscreens on of course there are exceptions to that but uh, just my own personal thing I would usually have a windscreen on when I'm using these microphones uh, because there's always airflow there's always something going on so let's do a noise test and then off axis Okay, so I wanted to keep it on a little bit longer to get that air conditioning unit, which is kind of in the sweet spot of rejection. So 
keep that in mind. Now we're going to do distance and off axis. All right, so about five, six feet away from the fronts of the microphones this is what it's gonna sound like. Uh, I can't really tell, I can kind of see it going up and down, but uh, I wanted to talk in my normal voice and not really uh, have a uh, exaggerated projection of my voice so that it's understandable of what a normal conversation would be uh, in a, from a distance. All right, 90 degree test on the hyper and line gradient. This is what it's going to sound like. Audio-Technica AT-875R in the Octava MK-012. Small diaphragm and short shotgun microphone. Both require phantom power, and I'm really just trying to find stuff to say at this point. So now we're going to go into the sweet spot and hopefully find more things to talk about. Now this is the sweet spot. I'm only going to do one side because it's just it's a little redundant to do the rest. I mean, it's pretty much the same on both sides. Uh, so this is what it's going to sound like in the sweet spot, 120 to 135 degrees. Lastly, 180 degrees, that bulb I was talking about, let's see how it projects the noise from behind about two feet away from the rears of the microphones. And this is what it's going to sound like outside. A lot of crickets going on, the crickets have gone wild, and so are the children. The children are going buck wild, so let me know what you think, and let me know how it is. Alright, so that's it for our outside test i don't know where this video is going at this point so you'll know when i know for the for the sake of this test and the sake of this comparison that's why i have both of these microphones out here right now because it's not necessarily a winner because they're good in specific situations so let's talk about my notes and talk about how i felt about it after i listened to it so in the studio overall tone the Octava definitely has more low end, especially when you're talking to it in close proximity. The Audio-Technica has a more natural tone, so that's probably more fitting for a shotgun microphone because shotgun microphones tend to have a more natural tone. Uh, there are obviously exceptions to the rule or exceptions to the standards, but I've noticed in a lot of tests I've done with shotgun microphones, they lean towards a more neutral and natural tone. With small diaphragm, I think they're more flexible with their tones and they kind of make them a little more unique. With noise rejection, I noticed the Octava was a little bit better with that hypercardioid for some reason. At least in close proximity, the mini fridge was the thing that gave it away and I felt like it was better on the Octava. And then once again with the Octava, it had a better off-axis rejection, especially in the sweet spot. Uh, not to say that it was much better in the other ones, but I feel like they were on par with each other up until that sweet spot. I really do feel like that was where the Octava was a little bit better. Now to the booth. Uh, the in-your-face voiceover situation. The Audio-Technica's low end is nice, but it could be a little much, depending on how you use it. The Octava has a low mid presence, as I spoke about before, that could make or break a recording. Now, the Audio Technica was better with the windscreen, but a bit nasally without it. So it opens it up, brings in more tones, but if you're a person with a nasally voice, especially me right now, I'm very congested right now, getting over a cold, so that could be a problem. And the Octava was very close. And uh, that came up a lot, that whole very close term. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's like a very make or break term, like the very close, because it's not like I'm comparing it to the Sennheiser where the price pay plays a big role in it. This is probably about 40 to 50 percent more on the Octava than this. Or maybe, uh, yeah, probably like 40 or 50 percent, if I was to guess, depending on how you, where you get it, when you get it. I don't know. Things are weird right now with gear and stuff. Now, the last thing for the booth, the ADR situation. Now, this is where it's boomed overhead. The Audio Technica is more natural and the Octava has more low end. Makes sense because it's the same as it was in the studio. Now to the untreated room. I noticed a little phase delay on the Audio Technica, but not enough to make or break it. Uh, if you're really listening to it, it could be a problem. And if you're someone who's nitpicky like me, that could be a problem. But also remember, 
it's not made for those situations. It's not made for a reflective room and interior dialogue. That's where the octava comes into play. And overall tone in that room, I kind of like the octava a little bit more. When it comes to the reflections, uh, it was pretty much the same other than the phase delay. And the Audio Technica was better at off axis in the sense that the tones were more muffled. Maybe it was my distance from the microphone, but I noticed that it was more muffled. If that made any sense to you. If you noticed that, let me know down in the comments. Now, finally, outside where the Audio Technica probably is going to be more of a go-to microphone in that situation. The Audio Technica was more natural and the Octava had more low end. That was a common theme throughout the whole test, all the tests and all the environments. The Audio Technica had better noise rejection. Makes sense because of being a shotgun. It is a short shotgun, not like crazy in the acoustic slots department, but it is still a shotgun. And finally, off axis, slight edge to the Audio Technica. So that is the comparison between the Octava MK012 and the Audio Technica AT 875R. And it really is a choose the right tool for the right job. And I said that at the beginning, I still stand by it. And it, it's, it's really coming down to understanding in this comparison, I feel like for a lot of people, it's less of a comparison and more so, can I use these two in conjunction with each other? Am I going to be able to get a full spectrum of recording, meaning I could go in all types of environments and use these two microphones together in tandem and make myself a powerhouse when it comes to recording? Or can I move past certain flaws in one of these and use it in all environments and all types of shoots. So keep this all in mind. Of course, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section. I'll be happy to have a discussion and talk to you guys about all these microphones that I cover and all the stuff that I plan on covering in the future. Uh, the Audio Technica, I think will pop up again uh, in a bigger video. I think I'm gonna do a part three or part three or four, I can't remember, I think it's three, of the whole shotgun versus small diaphragm, like a dedicated video for that. Uh, I'll get my friend's uh, deity back. I'll have this one, the Octava. Yeah, that's the word. And what was the other one? And the Sennheiser, of course. And I'll put all of them up against each other in, uh, and just have some quick tests in environments and just do what I did before. Uh, maybe some more environments, depending on how I'm feeling and how much I remember to put in. So that's enough rambling for me. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. It would be greatly appreciated. Helps this video, helps this channel. And of course, if you enjoy my vibe around here, please consider subscribing. It will be greatly appreciated. I know I haven't uploaded that much lately. I got busy. It was work. It was the holiday with Thanksgiving if you're in America. I was sick during that time, so I had just had a cold. It wasn't anything serious. Trust me, I tested myself three times for COVID, so it was not an enjoyable time. Uh, but so I'm getting over a cold. I'm currently in a kind of a lull right now in December where I'm waiting for another job to start next year. So early next year, actually, it's in the first week of the January. So during that time, I'm going to be studying for uh, my HVAC license and stuff like that if you know about hvac you got to get a uh, uh epa license to work with refrigerants so i'm hoping by the time i'm done with that job next year i could go roll back into that that's not going to change this channel that's not going to change much i might not upload as frequently but i still will be here answering questions and talking to you guys and like i said in the comments leave comments just be nice that's all the rules and that's all i got for you till next time take care and I'll see you Rebels in the next video.